Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Here is my recap for year 10. Year 10 of Thrill of the Grill, my solo Barley World over on Twitch. I just got back from the ruins to a few rotten giant crops from spring that I completely forgot about. I thought picked giant crops took a lot longer to spoil, but apparently they only spoil four times slower than their corresponding small crop. They still keep a bit longer when picked, and if you leave them on the vine, they spoil in about six days. After planting our birch nut trees, it's time for our first claws of the new year. The loot is pretty nice. Two lights, a shroom skin, and a malbatross bill. Still, no Krampus sack. Day 638, the chosen one is born again. I'm gonna try and be a bit nicer to this iteration of Berger. Maybe give him a nice feeding of blue caps every once in a while just to keep his health up. I'll lead him to this starter biome near the deciduous forest until the birch nut trees are ready. I'm spending a good amount of time this autumn on our new oasis zone, and the first thing I'm doing is throwing down a handful of festive tree planters. You can plant either a birch nut or evergreen tree into one of these, and once they grow all the way up, they will stay tall forever, and you can decorate them with winter's feast ornaments and food. They do require manure to craft, so what we're gonna do is have a big stone fruit harvest near the pig farm, and then commission a couple of ware pigs to convert all the ripe fruit into manure. Remember, you need stacks of 10 stone fruit if you plan on blowing them up with gunpowder. When you convert a pig with four monster meat, they're actually only a ware pig temporarily, so for larger batches like these, you will likely need to convert more than one to get through the entire batch. Day 644, we're christening the coming of the berger with another birch nut harvest. I've been absolutely blowing through boards lately with this new build and all the cobblestone, so I have yet to have too much wood on hand. Day 647, we're decorating the trees. My chests weep with joy as they have been absolutely overflowing with Christmas trash. I am eternally thankful that eternal fruitcake looks absolutely fabulous on a tree, which is good because it is a chore to get rid of them. I'm also setting up all the winter's feast tables. So the deal with these is that you can make special dishes at the Masonic oven with a combination of items, including holiday cheer that you get from gingerbread pigs and their houses. Then you can place these dishes at a winter's feast table and players can sit around the table and enjoy a meal together, which gives this timed restoration of all three stats. This multiplies with more players at connected tables if they're close enough, but I'm not really positioning these tables with any team strategy in mind. I just like the way they look and I want to feature a variety of different dishes on these tables. Day 657, I'm back on the lunar island mining some glass so I can make more statues at my base. It's too bad you usually have to wait to rebomb these hot springs because they don't automatically fill back up after mining. It does make sense though, because if they filled back up right away, you could do dozens of harvests of the same pool by just dropping in bomb after bomb during a full moon. While I'm out here, I'm also hammering some of the sea bones on the beach. There's a lot of these, and each one gives you two to three bones, which is much better than the bones you find in the desert. I'm gonna need all the shards I can get to eventually make more mush lights and glow caps. Day 662 is class number two of the year. The loot is a light and scales. By the way, this may have slipped under the radar a bit in the slew of updates happening in December, but amidst it all, the recipe for the cookbook got changed. Now it only needs a carrot and papyrus. I use the craft pot mod for sorting through recipes, but if you want it to go fully vanilla, then this book is a nice way of keeping track of recipes. And for me, looking at all those black spaces kind of reminds me how many amazing crockpot dishes there are in the game that I never really think to use. I'm working some more on completing the giant crops for my showroom, and I want to grow some pomegranate. Problem is, we don't have any palm seeds, so I'm back to planting generic seeds and just hoping for the best. There's really not much else you can do to make this process faster, but you do have a higher chance of getting in-season crops from generic seeds, so definitely plant in the right season if there's a certain crop that you want. In the other plots, I'm doing a round of garlic just to get some extra nutrients in the soil. Once they finish growing, I'm gonna plant some watermelons. I really like watermelons because they are one of only two plants that consume one arrow of two separate nutrients. 
So you can plant a bunch of these in a single plot and fertilize them once. Because of the maximum nutrient capacity of farm plots, with hungrier crops you can only plant so many without the need to re-fertilize after a couple of crop cycles. I do plan to explain this a little better in the nutrient guide that I've been working on. Day 763 I get a frog rain, so I figured I'd let the pigs handle them this time. Normally I'd bring them to moose, but I already know that moose didn't spawn in deciduous. The pigs will eat the frog legs, but I can quickly pick them up while the war wages on. Did that frog just bounce off a wall? This game is amazing. Day 674, we get giant watermelons! I really like the way these look, and I would love to use one as a decoration of sorts. So if you want to preserve a giant crop forever, you can rub it with beeswax. This is actually the first actual use of beeswax outside of a crafting ingredient for wax paper. Problem is, I don't have any spare honeycomb around here to make into beeswax. I could go all the way to the beehive, but instead, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm gonna deconstruct a wax paper. I mean, once we get out of Winter's Feast, we'll get four of these every winter, so I guess it's a viable option, but... That really doesn't forgive the laziness on display right here. Okay, next batch, I'm creating two dragon fruit and four tomatoes. This will be mainly to fertilize the tomatoes so that we can get a giant. I don't care as much about the dragon fruit. And hey, check it out, we got a pomegranate plant. I'm watering and tending to its every need so that we can get two seeds back. Even still, we're gonna need to replant and harvest twice more before we can get giants. Day 677, I'm placing down the last statue at the Oasis. I love these glass statues, they look like ice. They're such a perfect texture for a winter build. And there's the giant tomatoes! Now all we have left to fill are giant eggplant, pumpkin, and pomegranate. Hopefully we can grab that last one this summer. Class number three of the year! The loot is an eyeball and light. <laughs> According to the local statistician, the odds of having gotten at least one Krampus sack by now is approaching about 90%. Guess it's never a sure thing, but I will continue chanting sack until it happens. Day 684, I finally have enough pomegranate seeds to make giants, so I'm pairing it with garlic and dragon fruit for a self-fertilizing combo. They got planted around the end of spring, so I'm just making sure that this combo will also be good in summer. I'm also adding more decorations to this garden area in front of the festive planters. You'll notice that for me, height is a big consideration when building. I always try to place tall structures such as walls and trees behind shorter structures such as moon dials and replica relics. This just ensures that builds aren't blocking other builds too much. I generally keep my camera in a set orientation when building, so I only need to keep one point of view in mind. Day 687, we got this stupid weed in our farm, and apparently it was there for two growth cycles because all of the pomegranate plants that were in range of it did not grow into giants. You can practically see the radius of the weeds effect because the palms furthest away still became giants. Oh well, we got a giant palm and crap ton more dragon fruit. Two more giants to go. I waited five days to fight Antlion because the hounds were being stupid and I didn't want to get a wave during the fight. So I fed her a few times to appease her until we got a hound wave and then I could put her down. I'm trying to time it so that I kill her right after she summons glass castles so that I can use my fire staff to harden a couple of the sand castles. So if Antlion has 6000 HP, then she's gonna take 89 swings of a dark sword to kill. I'm just trying to deal those final hits as she's summoning a new round of castles. It doesn't work out exactly, but it does give me enough time to grab a few castles before they despawn. Much of this summer was spent fishing. During Winter's Feast, you have a chance to get festive lights inside of crumpled packages fished up from the oasis. And as Warly, I'm going to be saving up my fish for Mokeka, so I'm more than happy to put in some fishing time during summer. I'd say this zone is coming along nicely. I'm not a huge fan of the new Winter Wardrobe, but it goes perfectly well in this zone. For the oasis, I'm throwing down a couple of moon dials and endothermic pits on top of some lunar turf. Last day of summer, I poke my head out of the oasis to plant my next big batch of birch nut trees for autumn. And it's gonna be a busy year 11. We got another fuel weaver to take down, we got a dragonfly, and then it's high time to start building our houndiest trap. And then something very special happens. You definitely want to catch the next video. I hope you're enjoying these recaps, and I definitely hope to catch you next time live over on Twitch. Take care.